think I've met the majority of you, but if not, my name is Catherine, and I'm the Marine Education Coordinator, so I book all the field trips. You can blame me when you start going insane and Maine ripping your hair out, right? Mm -hmm. Totally my fault. Okay, so we're going to talk about all this. So, as Phil was just mentioning briefly, we're going to go over that a little bit more in depth, and then we're going to dissect a squid. These are the same squid that we feed the animals out in the visitor center, so you should recognize them. But we're going to do a lot of comparisons with our octopus because that would be very useful information for you to have with wood. So mullus is a huge group. It is the second largest phylum. So Kate covered a little bit of arthropod. And mullus is the next largest phylum that we have. So you can see this is our mullus poster. We've got a very wide breadth of animals. Go all the way from land snails all the way up to our lovely octopus. And everything in between. And just like Bill was talking about them, most of them are bilaterally symmetrical, so you can cut them in half and they're mirrored um, on each side. And we have a lot of marine species actually. So Polyplatypora, is our chitons. They're actually the least developed. So they're kind of primitive mollusks as far as mollusks go. And Bill was mentioning this, many of you have seen at the touch bowl. This is a great learning tool to use with chitons. Because you look at a chiton, and you know what in the world is that? It's got multiple shells, but it's not an arthropod. You know, it kind of looks like a roly poly bug, but it's not. Um, and a lot of times visitors will come in and say, I saw this weird thing on the beach, it was red and oval, and you go, Oh yeah, it's gumboot chitin. That's really easy. The gumboot chitin is actually the only chitin that covers its shell plates with its mantle. So the mantle actually comes all the way over. This is the hairy that Bill was talking about, and this is the mossy. So if they're not next to each other like that, it's really hard to tell whether it's got longer hair relative to shorter hair. And then the lion pegs are really beautiful. They can have a lot of different colorations in them. And then our big um, black king peg or black leather peg has got a lot of different names. Um, and that one's kind of an in-between. It's only got the tiny piece of shell sticking out. Um, and then the other chitons have most of their shell plates sitting So that's a fairly small class of mollusks. Then we have gastropods, which is fairly large. This covers everything from our banana slugs on land, um, all the way up to our uh, crazy uh, nudibranchs and even carnivorous snails. So the turban snail is really common if you go to the tide pools. You're going to see those nestled among the barnacles. Um, and other snails, they're really common. Cool thing about those guys, they can live to be 120 years old. Now which one is that? That's the turban snail. Turban. They're oh, little black wow. snails. Um, the larger they get, the older they get, they get white on top, just like people do, because their shell gets kind of worn down. So that's a really old snail. But then we've got things like our triton and whelks that actually eat other mollusks. They can drill through the shell of another mollusk and then eat out the inside. Um, they have a really rough tongue called a radula and they can um, uh, they kind of use up some goo that helps them dissolve the shell and drill straight through it. So if you ever see a shell with a tiny pinprick hole, a lot of times it's some sort of predatory snail. Moon snails, like that really big beautiful shell that we have out um, by the touching, they're great at that. They just drill a tiny hole right through and and they're gone. Our uh, nudibranchs have two main body forms. Every once in a while we have nudibranchs in the touch pool. Um, the most common of the adolids that we get are the opalescents, which are super, super cool. They've got more of a slug body shape with the um, their horns up front, and then all their gills and tentacles hang off the back. And dorids are more oval shaped. They look more slug-like. They still have little horns, and then their gills are in this feathery little circ uh, circle on their butts. We like to say they have horns. Dorids have fluffy butts. And then if you try to touch the gills, they will kind of suck in. So that's a very way to um, show people that these animals have gills on the outside of their body instead of protecting them and keeping them on the inside. Your brain actually means naked gills. So if they've got it on the outside. Most animals try to keep their gills very, very protected. Um, cool thing about these guys, though, um, which demoted them from my favorite sea animal ever, is that they eat the nematocysts, the stinger cells of other animals, things like um, jellies and um, uh, sea anemones, and they put them up into their own stinger cells. So instead of having to make their own nematocysts, 
they steal it from animals that they eat. Um, and I actually got stung by one of these cats. I had no idea they could sting you. Um, I touched them lots of times before. And one time I was holding one and all of a sudden it was like, ow, ow, ow. And I dropped them in the tank and I had these lovely little red dots in the creases of my fingers for days afterwards. Because apparently he had been eating some great sea anemones. Um, and the mattisists were able to get through the thin skin on the creases of my fingers. They can't be nasty little guys, even though they're pretty. Um, bivalves, of course, clams, mussels, oysters, all of our favorites to eat. Um, they have some pretty cool anatomy. They've got two siphons. They have an in-current and an ex-current. So in, inhale, exhale, same thing with their food. Usually they tend to point in different directions because you don't want to swallow the water that you just sucked all the air already out of. That's like us breathing in a paper bag. We're taking in more carbon dioxide that we just exhaled. So they usually try to point a little differently. And then they have this really cool muscular foot that they actually dig with. And if we have time, um, we will try to show you one because it looks very cool and weird. Um, when you see them stick that foot out, it looks a lot like a tongue coming out. Have any of you seen a clam foot before when they kick? It's very weird looking, but it's really cool. And then, of course, the reason we're here, cephalopods. Um, they range from our chamber nautilus, which is the most ancient surviving. We have beautiful nautilus shells. And then uh, squid, cuttlefish, and our beautiful octopus. So as time went on, cephalopods found a way to internalize their shell and get rid of it completely. An octopus, if you look at a diagram of octopus anatomy, you'll see a vestigial shell. And it's just this tiny little blob, like somewhere back there in the mantle, that's still there. They don't have any hard parts um, beside that. But this is how they all started out, with a, a fairly good shell on the outside, and then chambers on the inside that help them raise and lower themselves in the water. All right. And they're all marine, which is pretty cool. There's usually ex exceptions to every, like, all rule. Not with cephalopods. They all live in the ocean. Um, one species of squid they found can handle kind of brackish estuary water, um, but everybody else needs the pure salt water, and they're all predatory. So these guys are, even the little dinky guys we're going to dissect today, are very predatory animals going after their food. So we talked about that a little bit. Squid are pretty awesome. There's different, uh, 400 different species of squid. They go anywhere from these adorable little bobcats that are this big. To, of course, our giant squid that goes 60 feet long when you measure out to the end of our tentacles. Today's squid are market squid. Here we go. Market squid, so they're um, about six inches long or so. Um, pretty easy to dissect there in California. Um, cool thing about squid is, so we all know that giant squid exists now, right? Even though we've, we never capture live specimens, we know they're down there. One of the cool ways that scientists figured this out is because of sperm whale skin. They come up and they beach and you see these circles, these perfect circles on the skin. And it's because squid actually have teeth on their suction cups. Luckily for us, the octopus does not have teeth on its suction cups because we get marked up enough, as the spots know, just by them being friendly with us with their suckers. If they had teeth, um, we have more than octopus species left after an interaction with them. So actually, this is what's happening to these poor sperm whales. Is giant squid and sperm whales are in a battle of the deep. Because if that squid can actually hold down the whale long enough, it will kill the sperm whale, and then it gets to eat the sperm whale. But if the sperm whale bites the squid, it's very squishy, doesn't have a shell for protection anymore, it's in trouble, and it gets eaten. So it's a very cool battle because Anybody can win in that one because the sperm whale has to resurface, and these squid are large enough and strong enough to actually pull them down and drown these whales, big massive whales. And of course, squid are eaten by anything that likes squishy food. Uh, sea turtles really love squid, which is actually one of the reasons um, that sea turtles get plastic bags caught in their throats a lot of times, is they're mistaking them for squid and jellies in the water. All right, so we're going to do our external anatomy first. So I'm going to hand you your squid. Um, you want to uh, lay it out like your diagram, count the arms and tentacles, look for suction cups. Um, now we're going to wear gloves 
even though this is an in, invertebrate, um, we still want to keep minimal Google on us, and we'll wash our hands after. So if I could, Yeah, we're, we're 
thing the muscle um, and then of course camouflage. I, I'm not sure. I've never seen a way to make No. Did everybody get it? One has, so if you touch it, the black part is very firm, and then the clear part on the back is pretty flimsy because the black part is that hard part that has to fight. Um, just like through crab shells, like the alphabet says. And then that flimsy part is just kind of tucked into that buccal mass, that giant mouth muscle, which is why it's so easy to just pluck it out. You think about if you tried to take a jaw off of a human, that would be really hard to do. Here we can just kind of poof, poof, and out comes the mouth of this animal. Um, so it's not held in there with a lot of different connective tissue like our jaws are. So, the squid's eye, it's kind of hard to tell because these have been frozen and thawed. They have two eyes, but look at the size of the eye compared to the size of the body. Big. Is it big or small? Big. It's very big. They want to be able to have as much eye as possible to see as far out. Your eye, you let in as much light as possible. And we'll see if we have time again. So they've got actually a sphere for a lens. Instead of being kind of flat and curved, a sphere, it's a circle. Instead of flat like ours. So we'll see if we have time to cover that. But we want to get inside of the squid. So the, the first and pretty much only cut of our squid is going to be along the mantle. So lay your squid on its back. So the dark part of the squid needs to be laying down on your board. And you'll see actually the siphon at the end of the mantle will be sticking up. So what you'll want to do is one of your partners will want to hold the mantle up with the tweezers and then the other person will take your scissors. Most of the scissors have a rounded top and a pointy end so obviously the pointy end goes down and you're going to cut through that mantle and you're going to try not to cut too deep so we don't cut through all the organs and cut all the way up to the tip and then you'll be able to just kind of peel open the mantle and see all the organs. So go ahead and do that. See if you can identify the organs of your squid. And then we'll talk about gender identification. That's usually one of the easier things to do. And this is the siphon, right? Yeah, there's the siphon. And if you stick your tweezers up the siphon, you'll see where it goes. Yeah. Cool. See? It doesn't go very far. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah because it good. has to connect to everything right. instead of connecting to one thing. Cool. Did you see that? I did. You're very good at that. Whoa. Got to see these guys too. And you got a little essential. Oh, no. 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 Oh,
and the heart is under the guilt? Uh, I guess it's through we're tracing it back, is what she said. Three hearts. Three hearts. That's the main heart. How are you guys doing at work? So, is this? No, these are the these are the, these are the gills, and, then it's and these. Do you see this tiny little blob framed yeah, by my... Uh, that's one heart. Okay. So that's a gill heart. And then you kind of have to move this out of the way to see the other gill heart right there. Okay. You see that? Got and it. then there's this... Systemic. The systemic heart in the center is just kind of a yellow indiscriminate blob in the center so right. there. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. All right. So here's your systemic. You can see your this systemic heart much easier. It's just like a blob. It doesn't look formed at all. I see right here. And then this is one of your gill hearts. And here's your other gill heart. That is the ink sack. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. We will pop that at the end. Oh, oh, this must, must, be, a, this must be ours too, right here. This must be the ink sack. Very fun. So these hearts are pretty little. Squid beaks. If everybody wants to look up front, I'll show you a kidney. Kidneys are very hard, unless you have a female. So if you look up here on a female squid, there's this little pink organ down here right by the ink sac, and that's the kidney. But for some reason, females are the only one that has that pinkish color to their kidney, so it's really hard to see if you have a male squid. It's pretty much, um, you know, just another colored blob in here. So you can see it's nice and pink. It's pretty much the only thing with color other than the ink sac in your squid. So, so we've got the hearts, that means we've got the circulatory system. We found the gills, that's our respiratory system. We found our gonads, that's the reproductive system. What system does that leave? Digestive. And this is the reason we only wanted to pull the beak out before. I'm going to show you a really cool trick. Okay? Oh, I saw somebody squid. Oh, okay, that works. There you go. Here's your squid. <laughs> so, if everybody just wants to look up front for this part, and then you can try it out. So you're going to hold the squid the way you did to pull the beak out by the head uh, and fold open your arms and you're going to squeeze a little bit and this time we actually want to rip out the buccal mass but not really hard. We need to grab it with our tweezers and kind of wiggle it back and forth so you'll want to get into the skin and you kind of wiggle the muscle back and forth and you'll feel it give. Okay, now watch this. We call it a squid puppet. You have a squid puppet. You have the, the string that's hanging out is the esophagus. And then as you pull and you see the organs move within the body, that's you tracing the entire digestive tract. So you have to pull it kind of gently because that esophagus does rip sometimes, and that's fine. It does. Um, but as you tug, that way you can see the entire digestive system. So go ahead and see if you can get your puppet to dance. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and you just kind of jiggle it a little bit back and forth. Oh, you guys got it? <laughs> Oops, I think oh, we got a squid puppet, huh? I did, but I think I took off his sausages. Oh, don't you feel guilty every time I have calamari? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's pulled too hard. Okay. 
Sí, 